this is the NICU Lived Network and we are your hosts. I'm Melinda. I'm Nat. And I'm Emma. We are all NICU mothers using our lived experience to partner with health professionals to impact research, advocacy and clinical practice. Each week we will bring you something new. It could be a topic highlight, the latest in research, a visit to a NICU or ways in which you can use your lived experience within the NICU to impact change. We hope you enjoy this episode. So this past weekend was the Pazance Conference down in Melbourne, their annual con Congress. On Saturday, across Saturday and Sunday, they had some of their subcommittees, special meetings, um, and I attended the IMPACT uh, meetings. And IMPACT stands for the Interdisciplinary Maternal Perinatal Australasian Collaborative Trials Network. So basically, and we talked about this last week, Nat, who presents was, and, and we spoke to the chair of the conference last week, Miranda, who told us a little bit about what was happening and who presents was and what was coming up. So on the weekend prior, a lot of their different subgroups, um, and they have quite a few, get together and have their own meetings. And so I um, was privileged and really honoured to be part of their trials meetings, which was great. So across the two days, the first day um, they spoke to a couple of trialists presented in terms of different concepts around trials and really looking at um, different consent processes. And we've talked about this quite a bit. And I hope that in the future, we actually do a talk just based around understanding that. And one of the things, whether you know, it was an opt-out process or a waiver of consent or different ways to, to connect with families was really, um, I guess the difference in, how to have parents not only adopt the processes but also having um, staff adopt new processes in consent. So that was really interesting. And then two two mothers spoke, um, Riley and Kerry, and I was really moved by their talks, yeah, about their experience and really describing, and, and we've talked about this, like how, how overwhelming the whole process is and how like just the entire journey. And one of the things that was really stood out for me is that Kerry was explaining that when she was in time in there with her barbs, um, she was approached three times and she said yes to three different research projects. The second one, she can absolutely, she has no recollection. And I yeah. thought that was really amazing. Like, so she doesn't know what it was called. She doesn't know what she said yes to, and she's got no paper trail of anything. So she does know that her child was in a, free trials, but she can't tell you the name of one of them. Um, and, you know, like that's it's hard to hear, you know. Were you approached when you were in hospital about being part of no, trials? I recall. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just all a blur. Um, yeah. I don't think, I'm pretty sure they did, but, yeah, and again, I can't remember much from that time. Well, that was exactly part of the discussion. Like parents can't recall. And if you talk about it from an ethics point of view, you can ask that question, is it ethical to talk to parents about trials knowing they're under, you know, an extreme, um, extreme overwhelm, they're in shock, they're the inability to retain information. And, and I remember one of the researchers saying, you know, sometimes parents need things repeated over and over and it's not that they're, you know, belittling the staff or trying to put the staff down or have any kind of negative association in terms of the way that they're being spoken to. It's just simply that we cannot recall or absorb the information that we're getting. Yeah. Um, so I found that, that, yeah, so, I mean, they were so brave to talk about their stories, which is fantastic. And then across the rest of the afternoon and, and the next day, a lot of um, trials were showcased, which was amazing. And then also, um, I guess, kind of workshopped. And it's really interesting as a parent to sit there and, and watch, I guess, that behind the scenes kind of discussion in terms of what do other units think about the trial? You know, is there, is there interest in the trial within the units? Would they uptake it? Um, troubleshooting, whether it might be, difficulties in recruitment or any of those kind of things and being you know there's points where they'll turn and say well what do you as a parent think oh, that's great because I was going to say do parents get to participate in that in terms of the practicality or relevance of some kind of study yeah absolutely I think the thing is though at this point 
you know, within the impact um, meetings, I was the only parent in the room. Um, so really looking for ways to open that up where as we move forward, there will be more of us that will be able to be in there having these kind of discussions. Um, but, yeah, and even across the whole conference. So that was the first two days. And then on Monday, um, Pazantz, like the actual Congress started, which was fantastic up in the plenary. The opening speaker was um, Brooke Hansen. The, I think she won gold in the 2004 Olympics. A lot around her talk, she really talked about, um, you know, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. And, you know, she went through her her family's journey with her little boy, Jack, who um, was born extremely unwell and unfortunately passed away. So it was a very emotional talk, but at the same time really inspirational in terms of, you know, what, what she's able to do with that journey, what that's um, meant to her and her family and her passion for, be a, for being able to speak up for families, for being a voice, for whether it might be, you know, she's an, an ambassador for Life's Little Treasures and, and helping to raise funds or just helping to open that door. Um, but, yeah, her messages was really about transformation, about inspiration, about being comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I thought that was really a really nice way to, I guess, our discussion in terms of trying to bring that partnership between researchers and parents because sometimes it is a little bit difficult to have those kind of uncomfortable situations or, you know, really... I guess, understanding the value of, of having parents involved. Um, and then other talks that really stood out for me in the plenary, there was um, just try, oh, there was a study from India, which was really interesting, where under, it didn't matter what week the babies were born, so really early babies, like from 24 weeks onwards, were being, um, going straight to kangaroo care on mother and actually going from the delivery suite to the NICU in a kangaroo care position. And then in oh, some, mom. yeah, on mum, oh, yeah, wow. And there were some incidents where where they were in the NICU. So the NICUs were completely remodelled, and they called them M NICUs. So they were like mother NICUs, where the mother's bed was like her hospital bed was completely inside the NICU, and the babies oh, were being God. held for up to twenty hours a day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that was really interesting. So even um, really early babies, they were allowing... Really babies. early, yes. So yeah. that just makes me feel quite emotional because I remember when the boys were born, like I didn't, I think I saw I saw the head of one for like a second or two and then that was it and they were gone. And it was like, oh, I've had babies, but that was, do you know what I mean? You kind of just left like and just the idea of being able to, I mean, I was lucky to be able to see them a little bit later that night, but the idea of being able to have a baby and hold your baby would be the whole time yeah. i know yes and is it that way then that there's that the um improved health outcomes for those babies is that yeah, yeah absolutely yeah that's exactly what it's showing um it's really interesting because one of the breakfast sessions that um i was part of was wham which is wait a minute or more and that's him and you um puppets he's um leading that project on it's, you know, the delayed cord clamping or deferred cord mm. clamping, um, waiting 60 seconds before actually clamping the cord and looking at how that's been implemented around the country. And I find that really interesting because all the research is out there to say there is so much benefit from yeah. just waiting a minute um, in terms of, you know, outcomes, reduced blood transfusions and all of those things. And it's also in protocol. So, you know, being part of this to see exactly what's happening around the country and, and how that works and being part of that discussion because one of the things that got brought up was what happens in that minute. And this is, you know, you've got obstetricians, you've got, um, you know, midwives and, and um, nursing staff and, and all of that present as part of the discussion that it can be a little bit, you know, hands off while you're waiting for a minute. And I kind of put my hand up and again, um, at this point, you know, only parent in the room and saying, well, why can't we give that, that minute to parents? Why can't we oh, give them that? Yeah. They were holding the parent holding the baby in that minute. Cool. What was that? Sorry? They weren't holding the baby in that minute? Or then yeah. Like if, if, if this study from India is showing that there is benefit 
for babies being immediately put on kangaroo care? Why can't they be put on the body? Or I even suggested, you know, a lot of dads, when they talk about their birth story, one of the, you know, what, what's the one thing that dads think about when baby's born? Okay. Cut the baby's cord. <laughs> that, that would be something that they would be honoured to do. But when a baby's born prem, especially if it's cut, you know, immediately and it's so, mm-hmm. I guess, so such a difficult yeah. process, they miss out on that opportunity. And, and I know with the boys um, that their dad did that, like he missed out on being yeah. able to do that. But if you've got a minute where you're waiting for, you know, nature to do its job in that time, why couldn't that minute be used to prep dad to get him, you know, possibly having the opportunity to cut the cord? So, yeah, yeah. so it was all those kind of little things. And and watching, watching the way everything could be pieced together across the conference in terms of different talks was, was really interesting. I'm yeah. so glad you're in the room. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and it's a pro- like it's an ongoing project which I'm I'm part of. So yeah. I, it's definitely a chat that you know we need to have with with yeah, the yeah. research and and really do that. Another highlight that was in the plenary was um, a talk called "Can You Hear Us?" I don't know if the full one of the other took it out, um, but it was really talking about. Um, let me find it actually because it was. Uh, the time for implementing birthing on country is now, and it was by um, Yvette Rowe and Sue uh, Kildea. And what they talked about was, um, you know, the needs I get of um, First Nations people in terms of birthing. And yeah. it was really interesting when they talked about birthing on country. And even they they said, you know, it makes you think that, you know, it's what's happening in, in rural areas and, and outside of the big cities. But even when they birth in a big city hospital, you're birthing on country and what that means. So um, I found that to be a really fantastic talk. And then one of the other highlights for me was um, Professor Annie um, Yaniva, who's from Canada. Um, she's an enatologist, but she also had a 24-weeker. So she she has these brilliant, fantastic um, talks and perspectives from both sides Um and she, yeah, you know, of, of the journey and she talked about helping parents cope within the NICU. So they were re- really fantastic um, sessions. And I guess one of the things that was a highlight for me was how how integrated parents, and, and we talked about this last week where I think Miranda mentioned that there was 11 groups of parents were being integrated throughout the conference. Mm-hmm. But it was really, it was really evident uh, with all, within all the different subcategory and groups of Pizance, there is um, what you're part of. You, you co-chair the con- Consumer Advisory Panel, the CAP. Yeah, good. So the Consumer Advisory Panel is a um, panel that's made up of um, consumers or, you know, um, people that's had that lived experience within that kind of wide um, perinatal space. So it can be, you know, um, you know, Families have had um, experience with a sick or pregnant baby, or um, stillbirth, or um, you know a whole lot of other experiences. Um, and I guess the the membership is pretty small. I mean, I think we've got about four members. So I think this year there's a definite focus on trying to um, build that up and get um, some new members on board. But essentially. The, uh, the intention of the CAP is to be able to provide a parent perspective to Pizans on various things, whether it be, you know, any kind of development of documents, but also planning and also to be part of any subcommittees that Pizans do. Um, so, yeah, I think, but when I was speaking to the board, you know, they're really supportive of um, the CAP and efforts to kind of rebuild it and, and I think that's, I think, what blew me away the first time I started kind of entering the space was like, because you only really see those professionals, you know, in a, you know, in a doctor's office or in a hospital. But when you see them and this other side of them, it's like, wow, their, their, their commitment to excellence and to doing absolute, absolutely everything they can to improve outcomes. It's really heartwarming and totally part of the healing journey. It's just like, this actually is a huge world for me and it's, it's so comforting as a parent to know that there is just this relentless pursuit um, of excellence um, so that you know our babies and our families have better lives mm-hmm. couldn't say it better 
<laughs> That's a wrap on another episode of the Niku Live Network. Thanks for joining us today. To stay connected, please make sure you're following us on social media and have joined our Facebook Facebook group. <laughs> and if you found value in this episode, please share, like, or comment. We'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>